Pray with me. God, we just thank you so much for this morning, this beautiful day that you have given us. And especially, God, we just pray that you would open up our hearts and minds. God, we just want to experience you, you afresh and anew this morning. So with open hearts and open minds, God, we say, fill us up. Fill us with your spirit. We are your children. We are free because of your son, Jesus Christ, and what he did for us. And so, God, every praise that we have, we freely give it to you. Amen. Please be seated. This morning, um, we're going to spend just a little bit of time in prayer um, over this next song. This next song is called Salvation's Tide. And, you know, when we, we live here at the beach and we think about that tide, and we think about it ebbing and flowing, and, and, and we think about what that means to us now, in the life and family of our church. We've had some sorrow, some grief. Our world has had disaster. Our state, our, our city, we've had some devastation. And as we think about how we come to the cross and what that means to us in the cross, what does our salvation, what is our place in all of this. So this morning, if you'll please pray with me. God, as we think about these words, as we think about our life and how it all just comes together, God, we have to make sure that we let these walls, let these walls come down. And as we're praying for the lost, God, that they would allow this church to arise. God, we know that the darkness is out there. We know that this darkness is not a darkness that we want to be a part of. God, help us to really shine your light. Help us to be the positive voice, the positive words. Help us to just be a listener and there to lend a helping hand. Help us, God, to come alongside. When people think that they've got no more, they don't have, they can't handle it, God. Let us be there for them. Let us come alongside and hold them up. God, we want to make sure that uh, we are undivided as this song talks about that this church is undivided in every decision that we're undivided as a body of Christ God bring us together hold us together let us put you first Father God let you Jesus Christ be the center of all that we think about and do help us to put away the foolishness and to put away the times of just complications. God, help us to come together as one. Let us, God, open our eyes to who you are. Open our eyes to Jesus Christ. Let us see him in each other. Let us see Jesus in our own lives. God, allow us to be an amazing force of this humanity as we walk together and we build our lives together, God. Help us to show and help us to shine our light to this world. And it's in Jesus' name we pray. Everybody said it. Amen. Amen. And I want to share with you a piece of scripture. It's the last psalm in the book of Psalms. This is what today is about. When we gather together and celebrate with our wonderful servants up here, this is what God wants us to do. Psalm 150. Praise the Lord! Explanation point. Praise God in His sanctuary. Praise Him in His mighty firmament. Praise Him for His mighty deeds. Praise Him according to His surpassing greatness. Praise Him with trumpet sound. Praise Him with lute and harp. Praise Him with tambourine and dance. 
Praise him with the strings and pipe. Praise him with clanging cymbals. Thank you, Neil. <laughs> Praise him with loud clashing cymbals. <laughs> Praise God. Well, All right, as you get back to your seats, I want to invite the whites up here. Where's Deb and Jim? And your Dominican teammates, as are appropriate. <laughs> Come on up. Thank you. Peace of Christ be with all of you. Thank you. That's a good old Methodist thing, and I'll sit here. Right. So, part of worship, as we do occasionally, as is our tradition, is to share reports from your missionaries. You remember, we call our missionaries up front, you extended hands. We, you, the congregation of this church, sent out with God's blessing missionaries to foreign countries, just as we have missionaries right here in our local community. So I'm going to turn this over to Deb and Jim, our whole mission team, and they're going to show you some pictures and tell you about not only the Dominican, but also hot off the airplane, Angola. Good morning. Um. First, we're doing the Dominican, and in June, um, I was blessed to be able to take another team from here. It's my 17th year of going there, and um, I forgot, <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, we have a team of medical, dental, vision, um, and this year, we saw seven, uh, 600 36 patients. With that, 1,770 prescriptions handed out, 294 parasite treatments to children, 94 surgeries, and all of this is in nine days. 94 surgeries, 154 dental patients, and 122 eye screenings with 54 people getting eye classes. But most importantly on the trip, we were able to, with the help of everyone, we prayed for every patient we saw. Had 109 persons that accepted the Lord as their savior. And I'm gonna turn the mic over to these two beautiful ladies that went with me. But first, I just wanted to say, because a lot of people have asked about me about this this morning, um, I just got word from the Dominican late last night that where we go in the Dominican is very devastated from the hurricane and pretty much cut off from the other places. So I would ask that you all keep the Dominican as well as Cuba and all the other places affected in your prayers, please. I'm Michelle O'Neill. Um, I came, it's a two week trip. I came the second week. And the first part of the trip, uh, I went out into the field with the, uh, the eye doctor and the dentist. Um, and not only being around the Dominican was it very rewarding, but also the other people from the other states that came um, to see them interact and, and to, to witness people um, coming to the Lord. Um, there was a language barrier, obviously. I took Spanish uh, in high school, but I don't speak it anymore. And, uh, but it was fun to see, even with the children that would come in, it's universal to coloring with them, throwing the ball. Um, you don't need to speak the language. So it was, it was a very rewarding trip. Hey. Um, it seems like an eternity ago that we went. Um, and I actually went for the um, entire two weeks um, the first week I worked in the clinic and um, what Michelle was talking about and uh, first of all if you've not been there it's pretty amazing that this is a mobile clinic and it goes out into villages that in, we travel on an old school bus and we load it and unload it at every village every day and um, it was it was just amazing that we got to some of the places we went to and that there were people there because we would pull into these places that looked desolate and we start unloading and not really paying attention and by the time we were ready to start they would be standing in line 
And so these men and women would come with their children and their elderly parents and um, from walking down the, through the hills um, from places. So that really um, touched me that, you know, they, they knew we were there and um, they would do what they needed to do to get there. Um, the second week, I um, got to work in the hospital. And again, when we set that hospital up the first day, it was in an emergency room building um, that was just an emergency room. It wasn't a working hospital. So there was an empty wing that we go into and literally we set up a hospital. Everything for an operating room, all the equipment. I, I was dumbfounded <laughs> that that could happen. And um, they started surgeries that next morning. Um, so in the hospital, again, you walk in that morning and there's a whole crowd of people waiting to be seen. And the first thing we do is pray with them. And um, it, it's just very moving to see. We sing a song with them. It's a Spanish song. For the life of me, I couldn't repeat it again. It was a fun song. <laughs> um, but it meant tremendous love for those people and they would raise their hands and they were just so joyful in singing it. It was just, um, you know, we were there to um, help their medical needs. But for me, it was the emotional gift that not only they gave, we gave them, but they gave me. Uh, it was just, um, you gotta go. I waited 17 years. I sent one of my daughters twice and never dreamed that I would be flying out to go on that mission. It's wonderful. I encourage anyone that's interested in this trip, please see me. I'm Debbie White. I'm chairperson of missions here. And Together, we can make a good team for next year. Thank you. Oh, did you talk? Yes. Oh, thanks. It's okay. I'm in Africa now. <laughs> quick wardrobe change. Yep, quick costume change, real fast. Good morning, everybody. Bom dia. It's about one of the few expressions I know in Portuguese. Thanks for the opportunity to share the Angola mission with you guys. Uh, we just returned Wednesday, so this is fresh on our minds, and, but still a challenge to kind of put this together rather quickly. What I'm going to do today is talk about, give you some background on the Angola mission. Uh, we visited a place called Keswa in eastern Angola. Give you a little bit of background on Keswa, what it's about, both its history and where we are today with it and then talk about what we did as part of this last trip. We're we'll scrolling through some photos here. Didn't have time to put a video together, so hopefully it's not too distracting. But KSWA was a mission that was founded in the early 1900s by American missionaries and also in conjunction with the United Methodist Church. It grew into an incredible place. They, have, uh, they built education facilities, healthcare facilities, big, big hospital a seminary that's trained almost all the theological students in that part of the country and educated, it was a higher education uh, center of learning and provided health care for a lot of the area, uh, for that region of, of the country. Just where is Angola, if you're wondering, it's in southwest Africa, it's on the Atlantic coast south of the equator, so it's a long ways from here. Put it that way, it's a tough trip. But that's a little bit of the background. Again, it was this thriving community. It, when I just going through it today, it, it reminds me of what a community of, in, the, in the book of Acts would look like. There's very Christ-centered, uh, wonderful place. In, 19, in the early 1960s, they, this was a Portuguese colony up until 1961, and they had a, I would say, a gained independence from, from Portugal. And then after that ensued 40 years of civil war. And during that time, Keswa was burned out, bombed out, abandoned. Some of the missionaries over there were even in prison for a short period of time. It wasn't until the early 2000s that the Methodist Church in Angola, in conjunction with the Florida Conference, started rebuilding and reconstructing Keswa. That's what this mission is all about. 
So that's the background on it. We have, as I was going through the whole trip, a lot of things happened, but two words came to mind for me. The first one is trust. Debbie has a scripture around that. Proverbs 3, 5, and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to him and he will make your paths straight. So here we are. It's Labor Day Monday, September 4th. We're boarding the plane in Orlando. We have 26 bags of supplies, um, six of us in the group. The supplies will be needed for the trip, medical supplies, clothes, all kinds of things. But there was a problem, a looming problem, and this problem had a name, Irma. When we left that morning, Irma was Category 3 hurricane way out in the, Car out in the Atlantic. If you remember the three arrows that were pointing at that time, one was out in the Atlantic, one was into Florida or East Coast, somewhere on the East Coast of the United States, and one in the Gulf. So 40 hours later, we end up in Angola. We find out, we got a phone call from one of our friends. This is a Category 5 hurricane, 185 miles an hour, headed for Florida. Our entire team was potentially impacted by this. The leaders were from Bartow, Florida. The other couple was from Port Myers. We're from here. Our host couple is from Cuba. To say the least, we were worried. But we were able to make contact with some people. Our church family, thank you, Marcia, for helping us so much prepare our house. Same thing happened to the other couples. People stepped up and prepared their possessions, our worldly possessions here, the best we could. So go back to that scripture, trust in the Lord in all your heart and, and fear and lean not, not on your own understanding. Our own understanding would say, we need to go home. We need to get back. We need to save our stuff. But that's not what we were needed to do. We needed to do the work. It really came down to trust and obey, just like the hymn says. Easier said than done, truthfully. But that's where we were. We knew our house was in good shape. Everything we had here was as good. It, it was no, I couldn't have done a better job myself if I'd been here, if I'd been here and it saved a lot of the anxiety I'm sure many of you were going through at the time. So we set out on the work. So what are we going to do? One well, of the first things we did, um, there's a campaign called Imagine No Malaria that Pastor Clavey leads there. It's a very comprehensive program of education, providing mosquito nets, uh, but, but just not just go bring nets to the people. It is really to teach them how, mosquito, how malaria is spread and how to prevent it. There is no real vaccine for it today, so it's all prevention and treatment. So Deb has some stats on malaria. From June 1st through the third week of August, 9,154 patients were tested for malaria. Of those, 2,792 were positive. A few weeks ago, in one week, they tested 600 children, 588 were positive for malaria. So malaria is very prevalent there. It's a, it's a big problem. And Pastor Clavey was awesome. She would go in, we went to these villages, and these villages, you can see some of the pictures here, are these clay huts, and we meet with their leaders. They're called Sobas, which are literally their chiefs. And she has such enthusiasm for this. And the first thing she would say is, imagine Angola sin malaria. Malaria, sorry, I said it wrong. This is Portuguese. Imagine malaria, um, Port Angola without malaria. And she turned it into a song and get everybody singing. It was, it was incredible. But this was really the st first stage of that campaign. They will continue with this program and then go door to door, house to house, show people how to use these mosquito nets properly. This program is supported by donations that come from the Florida Conference. We carried cash, money, to go, take over there to support this campaign. Everything I'm going to describe to you today is, was done through those donations. Next thing we did was deliver supplies. We had, again, I mentioned 20-some bags of medical supplies primarily, um, lots of meds. I mean, bottles and bottles of meds. And we delivered those to uh, at the clinic. It's on site in Casewag. 
This building is incredible. It's a fairly new building. It was built two years ago. Uh, I'll talk more about it later, but um, they have a limited staff, and they totally depend on these medications for their treatment of patients there. So we delivered those supplies. I think Debbie has more stats on the clinic. The United Methodist Conference of Florida has a, an agreement with the customs in Angola where they have to promise that in case law, no medicines that we bring in will ever be sold. With that being said, every three months, they try to send many, many, many pounds of medicines. I think we had 27 bags of medicine. Um, June through August, 4,946 patients were tested positive for typhoid fever, parasites, urinary tract infections, and other serious diseases. Again, they cannot treat these patients without these supplies. It were brought up. We literally hand carried these. And the nearby city, Melange, has a big hospital. When we were there, they had zero containers of any medicine in the whole hospital. One other activity we have, they have a, a program they do on Sunday mornings. You see a lot of pictures of, of kids. These, these kids live in villages around Kaswa. Um, there's many, many needs. One of them is, is food, truthfully. On Sunday mornings, the church, the, actually our missionary friends, cook up meals for 400 of these kids every Sunday. And we did that one the first Sunday we were there. And there's Debbie serving, uh, serving spaghetti right there. And this may be the best, the, the, the best meal they have all week. Um, they, they have other foods, but this is a, a, a big meal. Again, the funds that are donated through the Florida Conference pay for that program. So those are the main things we did. There were a couple other things along the way. Um, the money also goes to, uh, they built a guest house, which we, we stayed in, um, on, uh, next to Leo and Clavey's house. There's money there to maintain that. We put some screens on windows, some other activities. But those are the main things we did. The second word I thought of was legacy. The legacy of case law. Where do we go from here? And I'll let Debbie give another scripture around that. Acts 10, 2. Excuse me. He and all his family were devout and God-fearing. He gave generously to those in need and prayed to God regularly. This scripture actually came from a devotion that I read recently, and, it, and it's out of, a little bit out of context, but, but what we're talking about here is the missionaries, Leo and Clavey, and all those involved in, in Case Watt. They live this every day. They are devout, God-fearing. They give generously every day and pray continuously. That's who they are. And the legacy I want to mention is um, there's an, what they call a Friends of Case Watt Association, they are literally, it's like an alumni association. These are people who, who really started, I don't know all their backgrounds, but some of them, are, uh, their stories are incredible. They were orphaned, they're this and that. And Kaswa brought them, um, you know, taught them so many things, and mainly about Christ. And now some of them are high up in government, in Angola. They have important positions, and they want to give back. So they created this association. They literally provided all of our transportation, they're with us the entire time. They want to see this continue. And I think the vision is for it to return to what it was before. But keep in mind, it hasn't been that long. It's only been 14, 15 years. But the buildings are there. The hospital's been rebuilt. It's an incredible hospital. Compared to the hospital that Molly mentioned in the DR, it is brand new. It has new equipment. It just doesn't have the staffing. At this moment, it doesn't have electricity. There's, there's power that's probably 500 feet away that hasn't been connected to the hospital. So that's, that's where the association comes in. They want to see this continue. So where does that leave us? What do we do? Continue donating. Like all those activities that we participated in were, dealt, were funded by donations that came from the Florida Conference. Continue that. Uh, 
um, sorry, send teams over. You know, we have our team that went this year. There's a lot more opportunities to do that. But most importantly, continue to pray for the for leadership and wisdom for for Keswa, for the mission, so that it can reach its vision. Thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Obrigado. Thank you. Got it. So you want to hear the gospel when you come to church. Listen to you, your own voice. Listen to you as, as you come up and you share what God's doing in your life and how God's using you. Just we're regular old people from Florida. Americans wake up every day to do the same thing. But then we can follow God's call and do something extraordinary. It didn't take a lot. I mean, the hardest part of their mission trip was getting there and getting back. Once you're there, you're just simply being in relation with other people that God made. And you find out that we're all really the same. That some of the happiest people you'll ever meet are living in those mud huts in the middle of Africa. They're the happiest, most content people in the world. So the gospel is best expressed when we listen to the voices of God's people. Go now, may the Spirit of God go before you. We said it, here I am, Lord. Now listen to the Lord call you into the wonderful gospel living life that you were created. Go in peace. Amen.